Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about anemia and pallor. So we will be talking more on clinical aspects of anemia and why do we look for pallor. So let's jump into this topic. First of all, we need to know what is anemia. So anemia can be defined as qualitative or quantitative diminution of RBC and or hemoglobin concentration in relation to standard age and sex. So what does this definition mean is there has to be either quantitative decrease in number of RBC that is decrease RBC count or qualitative means RBC numbers are normal but due to its functional disorders it cannot bind with enough oxygen So that is about qualitative or quantitative diminution of RBC and same thing goes for hemoglobin either its level has to be low or due to its functional disorder it cannot binds with oxygen and in relation to standard age and sex because different age has different level of uh, hemoglobin for that is considered to be normal so if that is below than that then only it is regarded as anemia so why are we studying anemia and pallor together is anemia is manifested clinically by pallor so point that should be noted here is anemia is not a disease itself but manifestation of some disease which is seen clinically by pallor that's why we are studying anemia and pallor together in this video anemia is not a disease on itself but a manifestation of some disease and which is seen clinically by pallor so what are the sites that we look to detect anemia so that is lower palpebral conjunctiva tongue especially tip and dorsum mucous membrane of palate nail beds palms soles and general body surface in this video we'll be only talking about clinical classification of anemia and there are other etiological classification and morphological classification that you'll be talking about in our upcoming videos but for this video we will be dealing only clinical classification of anemia so for that remember this three number six nine and twelve so what is mild anemia when the hemoglobin level is nine to twelve gram per dl okay but before then that let's see what is the normal hemoglobin level in an individual in adult male it is 14 to 18 gram per dl in adult female it is 11 to 15 gram per dl but who is menstruating who is menstruating uh, normal hemoglobin is 11 to 15 gram per dl so okay like going back to the definition in relation to age and sex now if a female has a hemoglobin of uh, let's say 12 10 okay okay let's take another example like uh, adult female who is postmenopausal her normal hemoglobin range is 12 to 
16 gram per dl now if it's 11 gram per dl c is anemic okay if it's 11 gram per dl c is anemic at the same time this adult female who is currently menstruating if it's 11 c is normal c is not anemic so this is the meaning of in relation to age and sex in our definition pregnancy normal level is 10 to 14 gram per dl and at birth okay it should be noted that at birth hemoglobin is 17 gram per dl let's get back to clinical classification of anemia so i told you to remember this 6 9 and 12 so there is mild anemia moderate anemia and severe anemia so when the hemoglobin is 9 to 12 gram per dl it's mild anemia when it is 6 to 9 gram per dl it is moderate and when it is less than 6 it is severe anemia so this is a clinical classification okay Okay, so color of palmar keys okay we said that we also look for palm to detect anemia so palmar keys gives a good idea about degree of anemia when they are as pale as surrounding skin the patient usually has hemoglobin less than 7 gram per dl the importance of this here is that blood transfusion is indicated when hemoglobin level is below 7 gram per dl okay so we talked about anemia which is detected clinically by pallor so what is pallor pallor is defined as waxy appearance of skin and mucous membrane so we must know that pallor and anemia are not interchangeable terms there are many causes of pallor anemia being the most common cause but remember pallor and anemia are not interchangeable terms Pallor is a clinical entity. There are many causes behind pallor. And anemia is a pathological condition which is manifested clinically by pallor. So, we said that since anemia and pallor are not same entity, so there has to be other causes of pallor without anemia okay so what are the causes of pallor without anemia that means person is pale but is not anemic that is there is waxy appearance of skin and mucous membrane but there is no qualitative or quantitative diminution of rbc and or hemoglobin in relation to age and sex so what are the causes of peripheral circulatory failure as in acute left ventricular failure shock vasoconstriction due to any cause acute myocardial infarction also leads to paleness without being anemic very tight aortic stenosis or mitral stenosis so we are seeing that all these points one two three four five are related to the idea that when there is decreased blood in that particular area it will be visible as pale now mixodema 
nephrotic syndrome sehan syndrome also causes pallor without anemia in myxoedema there will be slight anemia okay here you can say that pallor is very greater than anemia however we are considered with pallor without anemia so myxoedema is one of the example where anemia is very slight so vasovagal attack fear exposure to cold intense emotion also leads to paleness without anemia ena sarka or edematous condition also leads to pale looking skin and thick skin okay if someone has thick skin it can appear waxy without being anemic so in this video we talked about anemia is definition clinical classification when is blood transfusion indicated why anemia and pallor are different terms what are the causes of pallor without being anemia in the upcoming video we'll be talking more on etiologic classification and morphologic classification of any anemia Thank you all. Have a nice day.